The bar the girls high jump is at five feet two inches. All right, guys, so in this edition of stories that the left claims are just conspiracy theories and don't really happen, this is not reality that is all made up from the right, okay? This is just bigotry and hate from the right. Uh, we got to talk about a transgender athlete out of New Hampshire. That is a biological male identifying as a girl, okay? And this individual uh, is in high school and they have been criticized for dominating girls sports like for example when it comes to the girls high jump uh state championship uh this individual uh had completed a five foot one inch jump which you guys saw in the video and that was at least an inch better than all biological female competitors however when you compare it to the boys competition uh, the lowest recorded jump for boys was five feet, eight inches. This individual, whose name is Michael Jaquez, uh, also is a distance runner. And this person finished second amongst girls in the 1600 meter event, which sparked a whole lot of backlash and drama. So this individual essentially uh, is dominating all of the girls. But yet, if they had to face boys, then they wouldn't even be competitive, which is why this individual is speaking out as the GOP in New Hampshire weighs a ban of transgender athletes competing against the opposite biological sex in sports. Well, Steve, supporters say the bill is built on a few main points, female athlete safety and fairness and opportunity for those who are females at birth. Republican Senator Tim Lang says that the bill isn't about gender, but sex. He says that co-ed intramural and club sports are exempt because they're voluntary. But for organized sports, someone who's a female at birth has an understanding that they're competing against other females. An attorney representing the LGBTQ organization GLAD says that the legislation would put institutions at risk for violating new federal Title IX regulations just announced. Others say the trend, that transgender players take away opportunities for girls. Those who advocate for transgender player rights argue that the bill is discriminatory and unclear. Biological sex is a determinant of athletic performance because of the fundamental sex differences in anatomy. So again, the, the answer to your question is, you have a fundamental unfairness happening when a biological male participates in a female sport. Being trans is very, very difficult. Um, it's, it's one of the most difficult things a person can do, and I don't think anybody is doing it just to unfairly win you know, a track medal or even a scholarship. So there was another recent transgender, transgender bill that was discussed today, that was SP 341, a mandatory disclosure bill requiring teachers to tell parents information about their child, including sexual orientation and gender identity. In the newsroom, Arista Tansano, WMUR News 9. Good morning, or I suppose at this point, afternoon, um, House Education Committee. My name is Mayel Jacques, a 16-year-old sophomore from Newbury, and I'm here to testify in opposition of SB 375. Throughout my entire life, sports have been an integral part to my belonging, playing, playing soccer since the age of three. When I began my transition in the sixth grade, my school welcomed me onto the girls' team. This act of being able to be a part of the teams I belonged to allowed me to skip through the phase of social ostracization as the other girls accepted me for who I was and welcomed me, especially by their locker room rituals, like the ones where we go around and give a word of how we wanted to perform that game. Being part of the team allowed me to be seen as normal wherever else I could be perceived as a pariah. I didn't join sports with the goal of dominating competition or being better than anyone else. No one would go through the bullying and self-hatred of transition purely to win a sport, especially women's sports, which are underappreciated in our nation. I joined because it's something I'm passionate about and enjoy. If banned from sports teams and locker rooms, joining the male teams wouldn't even be a choice for me with the bullying and threats I'd receive, let alone the mental anguish I'd go through being forced to be someone I'm not. Thank you for your consideration, and please vote in opposition to SB 375. Sincerely, Mael Jacques. Thank you. Are there any questions from the committee? Not seeing any. Thank you. Yes, Representative Woodcock. Thank you. Good afternoon. How are you doing? 
<laughs> Thank you for waiting around. I know we started at 11 o'clock this morning. Just a question. In your participation in sports, uh, have you had any other teams complain or ask you to leave or stop the game? Never. I've, all the other teams have been very supportive. The only um, problems I've received are from outside parties, like media sources and whatnot. I've never received anything negative from other teams and coaches and players. Athletes or athletes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so you see, now you heard that, okay? So as you can see, this athlete is in panic mode, so it seems, at the thought of having to play against individuals of the opposite sex. Now, this person says that, hey, well, I'm afraid because of bullying and harassment. I personally, I'm not going to say that this person might not be afraid of that, but I think that when you are dominating girls, okay, and if you look at this person's record and how it stacks up against boys, um, I find it hard to believe that this individual would make the boys team, right? Because they don't just let anybody on the track team. I think that this individual, if they actually tried out for the boys team, they would probably have a difficult time making the roster, okay? I think that probably has a lot more to do with why this individual is panicking about having to compete amongst uh, the same biological sex rather than to compete uh, amongst the opposite sex because I think this individual knows that there's a good chance they probably wouldn't even make the team, right? They wouldn't be competitive, okay? You wouldn't be winning medals or placing first or beating all your competitors, okay? I'm just saying, I, I personally think that that could possibly be a factor. But I want you guys to notice how these individuals make arguments, okay? Especially when it comes to this issue, especially when it comes to this issue, None of their arguments, okay, from the left are grounded in any type of facts. It's all emotion. It's, oh, well, my feelings are hurt. Oh, well, I'm going to be uncomfortable. Oh, well, I just don't think that this is right. Oh, well, it's about how I feel, right? It's all about feelings. It is nothing but feelings and emotions. That's it, right? That's it. That's all they have because they can't back up their position with facts, right? Notice how the Republicans are arguing with facts. They're saying, hey, biologically, boys have an advantage over girls when it comes to athletic performance. This is why it's unfair. This is why it doesn't make sense. This is why we shouldn't be doing this. There are biological differences. These are facts, okay? Republicans are making fact-based arguments. The, the left, they're making nothing but emotional arguments. It's nothing but my feelings. That's all it is. And they do this on basically every subject. But this subject right here is where they do this the most because this subject is the worst subject for them, right? This is the worst. This is nothing but a my feelings type of subject for them. That's it. They're, they're simply arguing based off feelings. They have nothing else. And you know they have nothing else because when you watch interviews, like, for example, the interview that was done between Jake Tapper and the woke writer in response to the NAIA banning uh, biological males from competing against biological females in sports, the woke writer admits that, yeah, um, biological males do have an advantage over biological females in sports, but because we can't say that for certain in every single case, that means that there shouldn't be a total ban. There is a narrative um, that transgender female athletes have an advantage uh, that they always win, um, that the reason that men and women generally compete in separate gender categories is because it's not particularly competitive for men to compete against women. Do studies support that? Well, I think it depends on what you mean by support that. You know, for my reporting and having you know, really reported this out for many years, the reality is, is that from a scientific perspective, we know that there are differences in sexes and we know that the differences um, do tend to lead to athletic performance differences as well. However, when we look at broad based restriction um, at all levels of sport, it's very challenging to say that scientifically that is supported in all cases. Uh, meaning that something that might be appropriate for swimming does not necessarily apply to basketball um, when it comes to individual sports versus team sports, as well as level of competition. And so the idea, I think, that transgender women have 
an advantage in all sports at all times, regardless of any kind of medical transition, I don't think that the scientific literature supports that at this time. Would there be a way to come up with a rule that was more individual specific or sports specific that might not be, I mean, it sounds as though you're, you're, you're suggesting, and, and if I'm putting words in your wrong, I apologize, in your, in your mouth, I apologize. <laughs> it sounds like you're suggesting this policy is not necessarily fair uh, given uh, how blanket it is. Is there a way to do something like this that would be more fair and more reflective of what is factually known about gender differences in different sports, et cetera? You know, I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's right for me to say whether or not this particular policy is fair. I think <clears throat> that right now where we are as a society is really grappling with what does fair and appropriate policy look like? And in general, most athletic organizations and many states across the country are embracing a blanket restriction. And I think there are a lot of people raising questions about whether or not that is fair and appropriate policy in all cases. Um, and I do think that the jury is out on that, especially because when you look at the NIIA, there isn't necessarily a track record of transgender women competing in women's sports and dominating. Right? It doesn't really seem like there is a particular problem, quote unquote, to be solved in this case. Yeah. So you see how the goalpost is shifted here when it comes to the left because their arguments are so weak, right? That even the activists are struggling to articulate a position that actually really makes sense, okay? Again, this is why you have all the goalpost shifting. First and foremost, you have CNN with the softball claiming that it's just a narrative, right? It's just a narrative that biological males have an advantage over biological females in sports, which, again, tells you exactly the angle that Jake Tapper is coming at it from, okay? It's definitely not neutral. He's coming at it from a leftist angle. Shame on him. Um, but, again, this individual admits that, yeah, according to the studies, yeah, they there is athletic uh, advantages and differences because of sex. But I feel like blanket bans are appropriate because I feel like that might not necessarily be the case when it comes to every athlete or every event or sport. And it's like, okay, well, tell me which sport. Not cheerleading because, again, we, we have had a history of having, you know, co-ed cheerleading, okay? But not cheerleading. Outside of cheerleading, which sport? Which sport is it that biological males don't have an advantage over biological females? I guarantee this person will be hard pressed to say which sport. It doesn't matter which sport. Soccer, swimming, football, basketball, baseball, hockey, rugby, cricket, tennis, lacrosse, right? Which one? All of these sports. The athletic differences between men and women or girls and boys plays a huge part in the performance on the field and the competition level. Right. I would argue that. I, I think it's just a fact. And on average, biological boys uh, have an advantage over biological girls. That's just a fact. Now, again, you may have that one situation where you have a male who's just unfortunate and born with, I don't know, low testosterone, higher estrogen. And yeah, that really sucks. OK, that, that's a terrible thing. But again, we're talking about a rare circumstance. OK, we're not talking about the average right we're not talking about what we see in a vast majority of cases right basically 99 percent of the time which is that even the most unathletic of males are going to dominate the average female or even really the above average females when it comes to athletic competition evidenced by <laughs> the story that we're talking about okay which we have this athlete this high school athlete who when competing amongst girls is essentially dominating the girls. But when you compare how they perform versus girls to the boys, all of a sudden they're not even competitive amongst boys, right? Which again shows you that the most unathletic among boys can still dominate girls. That's how big of a gap in athletic differences there are between the average male and the average female which is why a blanket ban is warranted. So regardless of how these people feel, this is why you have athletic institutions like the NCAA that are looking to move to essentially enact this ban across the board, just like the NAIA and just like the GOP is moving to do at a state level because again, the facts are clear, right? I mean, it's overwhelmingly clear that, hey, this type of competition is not fair.
Calling all athletes, former athletes, collegiate athletes, high school athletes, what have you, we need you. You may have seen last week where the NAIA, which is a national collegiate governing body, voted overwhelmingly in support of preventing men from competing in women's sports. I think the vote was 25 to nothing. The NAIA was the first collegiate governing body to take the bold first step in prioritizing fairness and safety over inclusion. Well, the NCAA is set to vote on a similar ruling next week. What the NCAA has done up until this point is explicitly violate Title IX and its original intent by openly and actively discriminating against women on the basis of our sex as it pertains to opportunities, as it pertains to privacy and areas of undressing and safety in our sports. And the NCAA continues to allow this to happen every sport, every level, every division on college campuses across the country. So what can we do about it? The NCAA needs to be inundated with emails um, coming from girls and women or parents who would specifically be impacted or have been impacted by this movement at the hands of the NCAA. The NCAA Board of Governors up until this point um, have said their hands are tied. They have been strategic and diligent in avoiding accountability and avoiding responsibility. But it's up to us, the people, again, female athletes, to hold their feet to the fire and to demand that they hear us when we say we will not continue to allow the NCAA to discriminate against us on the basis of our sex. Again, violating everything that Title IX was implemented to protect and honor 52 years ago. Yeah, so again, the NCAA is currently considering uh, doing a similar ban to the NAIA. And uh, you saw Riley Gaines mention Title IX, which, you know, the Biden administration is essentially taking a hammer to Title IX and destroying the whole purpose of it in the first place, which was to protect women, right? Um, and they have not specifically ruled on how they're going to apply it to sports. But as you can see, the activists are already making arguments based off Biden's woke rulings that, hey, banning trans athletes from competing amongst the opposite sex is... Uh, a violation of title nine right they're already trying to make arguments based off what the biden administration is saying which is why it is so important that people vote right i mean when it comes to issues like this we shouldn't even be having conversations okay i shouldn't even be wasting my breath talking about stuff like this issues like this because it shouldn't be a thing right we shouldn't be debating whether or not it is fair for biological males to compete against biological females in sports it's, it's just something that in a sane society we should all agree with but yet Again, because the Democrat Party has gone so woke and so progressive, we have to have this debate and we have to put effort into issues like this because otherwise the consequences for women's sports are devastating. And it's just crazy to me to think about how the left accuses the conservative party, the Republican Party, of being so bigoted and hateful. But yet it is the conservatives that are <laughs> arguing for equality, like real, like, Hey, equal rights, okay? Treat everybody equally, which apparently is racist, okay? Uh, and when it comes to protecting women and women's rights, apparently that is transphobic. Again, it's just amazing how cool for Cocoa Puffs insane our modern politics have become. So, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.